Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Deidre from Our Upcycled Life. If you love a good upcycled farmhouse theme makeover of home decor, then this video is for you. I've taken some of my favorite ones, put them together here in this video, and I can't wait to share them with you. So we have lots to do, let's get started. For this project, I'm gonna use up all kinds of scrap bits and pieces that I've had in my shed forever. I'm gonna to put together a tiered bowl. The first part of this is a saucepan that I found in the scrap metal bin. I wanted to bend up the handle so it wasn't sticking straight out and it was really pliable and easy to do that with a pair of pliers. And it created a perfect handle. I'm also gonna use an old bunt pan, the saucepan, a spindle, and some knobs that I've had in my stash. I want to glue the bunt pan to the bottom of the saucepan. I'm using some E6000, bonds really well, and I'm going to stick it to the bottom of the saucepan and then set it aside. It's gonna take until overnight to set, and then we'll come back to this project. Okay, it's the next day. I now wanna use my little knobs as feet on the bottom of the bunt pan, using my E6000 again, and I'm gonna space them out along the bottom and set it aside and let it dry completely. This project took a couple days to get it completed just to let the E6000 set up really well, but it was really worth it in the end. I taped the little knobs down with some painter's tape to keep them in place while they dried. Everything is glued together really well. Now I wanna put a spindle in the top. So E6000 again, some painter's tape, held it in place, set it aside. And here's what it looks like all finished. I had some faux flowers that I put in, some little shelf sitters, a little doily, and I put some daisies in the top. And I think it has all kinds of farmhouse vibes. I love it. Perfect to put in the center of a table. This next project is a set of coasters that I found at the thrift store. It was one of those projects that it was only $1.99 and I thought, oh, I always wanted a set of coasters. I am going to upcycle this and make it beautiful again. Well, it turned into a really big job and a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. I started by scraping out all of the cork in the middle. I wanna put some graphics in there and they were glued down really well. I was able to scrape it all off though and then I sanded them out with a piece of sandpaper and I, there was two little knobs on the top of the coaster set and I took those off gave them a little sand, filled them up with some wood filler, and we're ready to paint. I'm gonna give everything a coat of black spray paint as the base color. When that's all dry, everything's gonna get two coats of my homemade chalk paint. And then when that was all dry, I took it outside with an 80 grit sandpaper and gave everything a really good distress. It's starting to come together, and I love the way that it looks so far, but wow, what a lot of work. Now comes the fun part. I designed these graphics, a different one for each coaster, wine theme and coffee theme. I printed the graphics off on my laser jet printer, reversed the text, and it's just regular computer paper. We're gonna do the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Going to apply the Mod Podge on each one of those graphics and then put it on the coaster, making sure that we have our, our words lined up with the front of the coaster. This sheet of graphics is available in my Etsy store if you're interested in trying to make some of these coasters yourself. I've let everything sit for 24 hours. We're gonna dampen the paper and rub it off and left with beautiful graphics on our coasters. If you're making coasters, you wanna make sure that you seal them really well. Either use a lacquer spray paint or an engine enamel because you're going to be putting drinks on them that are gonna condensate. And finally, all done. Sip and repeat. Good to the last drop. Cheers, bottoms up, on cloud wine, wine o'clock, coffee and chill, make it a double, and drinks on me. What do you think? Was it worth all of the work? I think so. I really love the process of bleaching wood. I always see so many pieces at the thrift store that have that orangey red colored stain on it and it just looks really dated. By doing this technique, you can take a project, 
furniture, anything wood that's stained and make it look more modern. Your first step when bleaching wood is to get off that top layer of varnish. You want to sand it really well. I'm using a very fine sanding block. You don't want to scratch the wood. So I'm using a 220 piece of sandpaper and a sanding block and removing as much of that varnish as I can. I've mixed up a solution of 50% bleach and 50% water, put it in a squirt bottle, and I'm completely drenching that candlestick. You want to completely soak that wood and then let it sit and let the bleach do its magic. Let the bleach solution dry on the wood between each coat. I did this process three times for this candlestick until I got the desired lightness of the wood that I liked. When you're all finished, make sure you rinse it really well with some water to neutralize the bleach. And then I'm going to put on some polyacrylic sealer. I'm really happy with the way these turned out. They kind of have that wooden boho feel, much better than that orange yucky stain. And it's a really easy upcycle to do in an afternoon. So when you're at the thrift store, look for those pieces that you can update really easy with the bleaching technique. And here you can see the amazing transformation with the before and the after. This was one of my favorite yard sale finds from last summer. If you can believe it, I picked it up for 50 cents. With the price of lumber right now, this was a steal. I'm gonna do a fun painting technique on this, add some graphics, turn it into some beautiful farmhouse decor. First thing I wanna do is paint the inside and the top of the lid with some black homemade chalk paint. Next step, I wanna add some candle wax. Wherever you put candle wax on your project before you paint it, the paint will not adhere to it and leave a chippy finish. And then on top of that, I'm going to add some more black chalk paint, layer up some more wax again, and just get a real chippy feel. And sometimes I like doing two techniques on one project. So on top of that candle wax technique, I am going to do my crackle paint technique with Elmer's glue. I'm going to apply that school glue over the entire crate. If you put more glue on, you'll get a thicker crackle. And if you put it on lighter, you'll get a smaller crackle. So just adjust it to how you want your project to look. I've got out my white chalk paint and when doing this technique you want to make sure you do long brush strokes. You don't want to work that paint into the glue or you'll lose the effect of the crackles. So I'm just going along the top from one end to the other. To finish off the painting technique I'm going to sand it really aggressively with an 80 grit sandpaper. I've got the painting technique all finished and it's ready for graphics and look at the before and the now using that crackle technique it just creates that authentic vintage looking wood this is one of my favorite graphics i've used it on a lot of projects going to do my mod posh reverse graphic transfer method which is also my favorite to put graphics on any project i've printed off these graphics on my laser jet printer making sure to reverse the text putting a little bit of Mod Podge on the paper and then putting it down on the project, getting rid of all the bubbles and wrinkles. This uh, graphic is available in my Etsy store if you wanna grab it and use it on one of your own projects. We're gonna dampen the paper and then rub it off and we're left with beautiful graphics on our crate. This technique takes a little bit of practice, but when you get the hang of it, it is fantastic. I want to put some feet on the bottom of the crate. So I had these spindles in my stash. I cut them all to the same length and we're going to screw them into the bottom of the crate so they're nice and sturdy. Put that twine back on the side. I really like the twine, wanted to keep it. And then I'm going to seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. I love the way that it turned out and what a steal to find it at a yard sale for 50 cents. The graphic fit onto this project perfect and I love that you can have some storage in it and turn it into almost like a coffee table when I added the legs. Here's another fantastic chippy paint video and this is really aggressive. Make sure you stick through to see the end because it looks sketchy but it gets really pretty. I am just using my homemade salt wash paint. I've put a couple layers of it on already. I did the base coat black and then I did some salt paint with the blue and some brown and now I'm just slopping it on just this green salt paint that I mixed together. I have a full tutorial on how to make salt wash paint. I'll put that down below in the description and you can check it out because it's a really neat technique. 
The trick when you're doing the salt wash paint is not to brush it on. You want to just dab it on. If you're brushing it, you're pulling that paint underneath the salt and you're not going to get that chippy look underneath. I've kind of lost count of how many colors I've already put on this stool, but I had all the scrap paint that I wanted to use up and I figured this was the perfect project to do that. Another trick when you're using the salt wash paint is you have to make sure that it dries really well between each coat. Don't put the next one on until the one underneath it is completely dry. If you apply the next coat on something that's not dry underneath, it's just going to be a mucky mess. And this is also a really sloppy technique, so you wanna make sure you're doing it in an area where it doesn't matter if you're going to get paint kind of spilled or when we're going to sand it, it makes a really big mess, so do it outside, or I'm out in my shed where I have lots of ventilation and it doesn't matter if I'm going to have a mess underneath. Now my last coat, I'm taking my white chalk paint and I'm just painting over the entire stool on top of all of that salt wash paint. This is just plain chalk paint, not a salt wash paint. I was able to use up a lot of scrap paint on this little stool and I'm excited to see what's gonna be revealed underneath. It's completely dry. I am going to just start scraping off some of that salt wash because there's so much on here. My first step is to scrape it all off and then to sand. I got it all scraped down and now I'm going to sand it really aggressively with an 80 grit sandpaper. Now I've got a lot of wild colors going on so I'm just going to bring it down a little bit by putting a coat of that white chalk paint over top of it after I've sanded and then scrape away a little bit more again. I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. I was going for a real chippy antique feel and I think I achieved it. I'm gonna seal it all up with a polyacrylic sealer. So if you're brave enough to slop on a whole bunch of salt wash paint onto a project that you have, you need to try this technique. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's just layer up the colors, scrape it off, and you're left with this fantastic finish. Let me know down in the comments what you think. If you enjoyed this video and you like this kind of content, I'd love for you to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. And if you love this video, I'm sure you'll really love the next one.